Well, France 24's London correspondent, Benedict Pavio, has been following all of these developments for us. She joins me now from London for more. Uh, Benedict, a, a surprising development and yet very surprising at the same time, I, I'd like to say. Well, this is unprecedented. We're about to get our third UK prime minister in one year. We have been covering... Um, every day of this premiership, an extraordinary premiership uh, that is now ended uh, officially, or at least she's announced her resignation on the 44th day. Uh, she's also announced that there's going to be a leadership uh, election within the Conservative Party within the next week. This is brutal. It's humiliating uh, politically. Uh, it's been only six and a half weeks that she's been in the job. And as you said, it is very much that so-called mini budget on the 23rd of September and that contact with reality of her wanting to be disruptive, not to follow what is called or she called orthodoxy of the finance ministry here uh, and the huge turmoil in the markets with uh, interest rates mm -hmm. uh, having to go up. Uh, the pound being battered, uh, the pound suffering against the euro and the dollar now back up, but only after interventions of the Bank of England. So what is uh, playing out here is quite extraordinary. Yes, we have had in that premiership uh, the death of the head of state, the Queen. Of course, that meant a political hiatus at a time when the United Kingdom can really ill afford it. We have 10.1% inflation rate here. Uh, that is overall, but for food, it's about 14 or 15%. We have recurring over the last three to four months, postal strikes, uh, train strikes, uh, a looming nurse strike. So clearly social uh, tension where these workers want uh, their pay to be indexed to inflation and not to wage earnings. So now, uh, the mind is already turning um, to who is the potential future PM. Jeremy Hunt, uh, the new Chancellor of the Exchequer, the finance minister since last Friday, has ruled himself out. Uh, so other names, Rishi Sunak, the former uh, Chancellor, uh, could declare that he is up for it as well. Remember, he was in that leadership race and he was the number one choice of the parliamentary party, Liz Truss was not the first choice. She was the third choice. And that is thought to be partly also at the root of this debacle. Benedict, uh, President Macron speaking just moments ago, the French president has says that he hopes that the UK can find stability after this, this latest switch up. I, I'm just curious to know what the UK thinks itself. What are the British people thinking about all of this? This confusion, this chaos, the fact that this prime minister lost control of events, lost uh, control of her government, uh, we see it in the polling, we see it in, in daily polling, we see it um, with vox pops across all British media, whether in the written press. Uh, this battle of survival for Liz Truss has really uh, been a daily one and she could no longer continue. And where it comes to either fellow MPs uh, making jokes, as the leader of the opposition did yesterday, uh, asking her, you know, how if you can't even trust a commitment that was made a week ago by the prime minister, what's the point of this prime minister if she sacks her first chancellor, quasi quoting, for implementing the very policy, budget policy that she wanted? Why does he get sacked and she gets to stay? Uh, also, when he asked yesterday at prime minister's questions uh, about a book being written about Liz Truss as prime minister, uh, which was called Out by Christmas, uh, he said to great general laughter within parliament, uh, is that the title, uh, the release of the publication, or is that basically, you know, basically going to be followed by, by events? Only 24 hours ago, the prime minister, Liz Truss, she's still still Prime Minister as we speak, but of course, as has announced her resignation, said she was a fighter, not a quitter. But she has today quit. She stays on as caretaker. She's spoken to the king, the head of state, as any prime minister must do. The big question will be for whoever does succeed her within the next week in this leadership election. Officially, the Tory party, the Conservative party, command the majority in the House of Commons. Boris Johnson, back in 2019, got an 80-seat unexpected majority, and uh, the Tory party has about 60-plus a majority, but it doesn't feel like it. So if they can get their legislation through, perhaps this new prime minister, this new leader of the Conservative party, commanding that majority, will say, look, 
I acknowledge there is a democratic mandate question. Uh, I know the Labour leader, as he just has, Sir Keir Starmer, has just again demanded a general election. That is the mood amongst the people, I think, uh, we're seeing reflected in the polls. The Labour Party is 30 points or so ahead. Um, no prime minister has to call a general election for another two years. That was the mandate obtained by then Prime Minister Boris Johnson. But uh, this new prime minister would be well advised to say, make his or her intentions clear and say, look, not right now. We need stability, as mentioned by President Macron. But what I can promise is in the coming months, in the spring, for example, give us some time, we will call a general election. So much uncertainty, so much chaos. The new reality is, and the new clarity is, Liz Truss has just resigned as UK Prime Minister. She certainly has. Well, we're happy to have you as a constant. Benedict Pavio reporting for us there from London. I'm sure we'll be checking back in with you throughout the day for the latest developments on the resignation of Liz Truss, the British Front Prime Minister.